welcome to our tech talk so it has been a great week for tech mm -hmm. no news <laughs> <laughs> so when i said great news um, i think we spoke about this spectra uh, and meltdown issue uh, yeah. during past Hmm. episodes uh, so still no solution right yeah. as everyone thought it's definitely a huge prob problem so if you go into the detail about this so what what's happening right now is um so we know there are processor manufacturers out there right so yeah. major major vendors are uh, intel and, and then amd right yeah. so uh, and when you hmm. talk about the intel processors there are more than 1400 defective processors mm -hmm. so that's the quite mean a different lot. models different models yeah. out of which uh, so this has been there for quite long time yeah uh, uh, so there are few processors that doesn't get affected like the intel atom series okay. are not affected um, so apart from that rest of them are so what uh, there were two uh, solution that came out right one is the os vendors put patches in place right okay. so like microsoft uh, apple and then uh, linux they put patches Yeah. But Intel themselves came up with a uh, firmware update. Firmware update in the sense they actually update the processor itself. Yeah. Uh, and patching the uh, vulnerability, but that only applied for third generation and up processors. Mm -hmm. So if you have something below that, they basically mean you're not going to get patched. Yeah. Uh, but sad news is um, when the software patches been applied, let's say the Linux patches, we spoke about this as well. Mm -hmm. The CPU performance came down up to 40%. Yeah. It's like you having a 2 gigahertz processor all of a sudden your processor speed come down to 1 yeah, gigahertz. Yeah, going back few years. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> going back few years. Uh, sadly, um, even uh, within the Linux community and others they are really arguing over what to do. Yeah. But um, then It, Intel came out this patch, right? Yeah. So what happens is when they were actually applying this patch, oh computer started rebooting itself. Yeah. So in terms of the performance it tell na the intel patch actually don't uh, affect it as much mm -hmm. so according to their benchmark it's about 3 to 4% drop yeah so most of the time the processor performance stays around 96 to 90% you know yeah. so it's it's not that bad mm -hmm. uh, but what happens was certain uh, processors uh, start a rebooting giving errors uh, so if you apply this patch uh, especially the intel based patch yeah uh you might uh, see this from happening so finally intel came out and said don't install it yeah and wait now, for something better well everyone is now waiting for something better right yeah. uh so i mean it would have been great if uh, when they were planning this feature speculative uh, execution if they made it in a way that you can like turn it off from the bias maybe no so yeah. that would have been great right yeah. uh Uh, then we just have like turn it off yeah so um, even the so linux uh, so the linux developers has been uh, the linux travel has been really vocal about it and said yeah. look even the patches uh, as a feature it comes as a feature right mm -hmm. so basically you have to manually go and disable it yeah so he was like saying look if there's a vulnerability if this out there uh, it should be turned off right so uh, now this has been the case in most uh, is, uh, cases right sometimes you know there's a vulnerability but still keep it enabled uh, so you get the what do you call the well ease of use the usability and all that yeah. right um, in terms of browser still you are basically safe so chrome ie uh, safari all of them has patched for this right, right. so if you are using a browser you are kind of safe right now provided you have updated it mm -hmm. um but in terms of having application installed on your system you know yeah uh well i haven't applied the patches yet mm -hmm. so i st i stayed away from it <laughs> uh uh knowing that i'm 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 using that system smartly right mm -hmm. so i'm not going to install anything that i don't trust uh, yeah. so i'm not going to have anything well again that's that's a compromise right so yeah. i'm i'm trusting myself to behave mm -hmm. So, so if you have a system like, especially servers, till now you can't take a performance hit like that, right? Yeah. So you plan for it. You have your hardware. Um, you deploy it, and you know that your CPU usage will come down to about eighty percent, but you're fine, right? Mm -hmm. Just imagine that us going installing that patch, and all of a sudden your CPUs are, you know, your performance goes down by forty percent. Yeah. So yeah. Basically, you need another computer. Correct. So that's that's yeah. not something you plan for, right? So yeah. um so if you are in it environment if you are in a 
uh, environment where security is a concern, you have no choice, right? Yeah. You have to apply it unless you have taken other precautions. Like, for example, if you really, really want to get out of it, how you can do it? Let's say you want to log into an application, right? Mm. You, uh, let's say tabs, right? Tabs are affected, right? Yeah. Android tabs, everything is affected. Provided those certain, even the Apple iPhone process that uh, I think they have about 13 different process, mm. all of them are affected. So I think we'll have to wait and see how uh, new developments come to this. Yeah, the problem here is like a lot of people can put fixes in place that might again break few things as well. Mm -hmm. So when I say break few things, some application might not work well and their performance yeah. will come down. So the only proper solution is to uh, put out a new CPU, right? Mm -hmm. None of the, I mean like it's not practical to go and replace all the CPUs out there, right? Yeah. So if you are running like a Core 2 Duo or something like a computer, like, you know, second generation Intel iCore processor, yeah. nothing much you can do mm. unless you are like third generation up. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, I don't know uh, whether they can yeah. patch it, even though the, let's say now the 8th generation and 9th generation are out, right? Mm -hmm. So I am not sure whether they are, when they are shipping those CPUs, that they might be able to fix it. Yeah. Uh, well, they haven't said anything about it. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to uh, computer equipment, uh, nowadays RAM and uh, GPUs are pretty expensive, uh, mainly because of uh, mining. Yeah. Mining in the sense of Bitcoin mining. Um, Correct. So be, not only Bitcoin, mine, it's yeah. cryptocurrency. So <laughs> GPUs are fine, right, in terms of these vulnerabilities, they are not affected. Yeah. And uh, the, you know, these Raspberry Pis and all, they are not affected with one of those vulnerabilities. Okay. So they are, they are fine. So they are normal. Yeah, they are yeah. ARM-based, but somehow uh, I think they are like at a level where uh, they are so low end, mm -hmm. uh, those features are not there. Okay. So actually, <laughs> yeah. so this, uh, these features are actually, uh, so what happens is the, if you talk about it, why there's a performance, it's, um, so CPUs are smart enough to understand what they have to do next. Yeah. So before that instruction comes in, let's say, uh, I'll tell them to go to the room, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of instruction you can give them, right? Yeah. You can tell the CPU to go to the room. Mm -hmm. So they might go to the room and they might uh, speculate it and say, look, uh, he might ask me to turn on the light. Yeah. So before I say turn on the light, he's already prepared to turn on the light. Yeah. So he has that, everything they need to do. Yeah. So that execution yeah. happens faster than uh, he's waiting for me to give the instruction and then act upon it. Yeah. They're already there, it's just that they're waiting to execute it. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things are what uh, performance hits, so that if... So they gather everything and when you say like turn on the light, then only they like check the permissions if I can Correct. really turn on the light. Yeah, so then there's a small bug where that hardware limitation, uh, mm -hmm. because these are controlled by hardware limitation and software limitation, yeah. where someone can... Uh, theoretically steal data. Yeah. So this hasn't been proven, right? So it's not a virus that's already out there that are doing it. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's 100% accurate where every time they can steal your password, it's not. Mm -hmm. So these are speculatively, uh, it's proven, yeah. it can be done, mm -hmm. but uh, someone needs to install an application, someone needs to have this on your system, so someone ma already have to access those memory each and every time and make sure that your password are in the memory. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of ifs there. Uh, we had to take a small break. Uh, see you after this. Welcome back. So before uh, the break, we're talking about uh, the sad news, the process and all that. Mm -hmm. But there's good news as well. Uh, so if you have been following uh, Elon Musk, uh, yeah. so basically Elon Musk uh, did PayPal. Mm -hmm. And then with all that money, he started uh, SpaceX and then he has Tesla yeah. and then the boring company. Mm -hmm. When I say boring company, it's not boring. <laughs> it's actually it's drilling, mining. <laughs> so it's, it's not the boring company. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I feel like ah, it's a boring company. <laughs> It's not a boring company. So basically, uh, they have been trying to raise money. So they have been selling caps. Yeah, well, um, still has one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, Elon wanted to like sell uh, fifty thousand caps. So 
it's kind of limited edition so yeah. i have one of that 50000 <laughs> and did he actually say 50000 yeah, yeah he yeah. sold 50000 and yeah. after that he said he is going to a uh, sell frame flame throws next yeah. and now he is ready with the product and now he is selling flame throws that's about 500 dollars right 500 dollars and he is selling 20000 Yeah. <laughs> uh but sadly I don't think you can get one here, right? Can you? Uh, is it illegal? Are you you know. will have uh, in US of... it's legal. Uh, I mean uh, what they're saying is if the flame goes not more than 10 feet you can sell it. So oh, Okay. <laughs> so here you will have a tough amount of time uh, explaining this to <laughs> customs. <laughs> uh but it's more practical here, right? We can like You What said a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine going outside and like doing this. Ah, that's good. Uh, I've seen they are demoing it. It looks pretty cool. Uh, how do you put gas into it? Do they have a canister kind of? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> so uh, they are selling a separate uh, flame thrower. I mean, uh, flame extinguisher with it. It's still thirty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's business right yes but the, what they're saying is it's the most uh, safest flame thrower <laughs> how can kind of a flame thrower be safe <laughs> yeah. unless it doesn't work yeah. the thing is calling like, uh, this uh, boring uh, company idea it's not just, boring it's very interesting so he got it like when he was traveling um, somewhere the traffic was huge so he thought what can i do to make this better So, we always say pihambala and kele kenar passe kena hon gana udding and ke so he decided so, udding and we yeah. also get a lot of ideas when we were we when you are in the traffic right yeah. but ilan he can uh, do it <laughs> so what uh, so <laughs> basically what the boring company does is uh, they are boring a tunnel under yeah um, and then putting a hyperloop and uh, that's something different that's, that's a different company yeah. so big. so this kind of uh, uh, capsule where you can put the car in yeah and it will like drag you to the so next it's location. it's like a, a vessel for your car right yeah. so basically you park your car there and it will take you to your destination and then you can take your car out of it yeah. so that's one concept he's trying to do and then uh, the next one is the um, hyperloop yeah hyperloop is going at what speed uh it's uh, nearly 1000 km so. so hyperloop is like a train right so you go and yeah. sit sit on it so it's a huge vacuum tube uh the vehicle goes inside it and uh, with the vacuum power it so uh, basically since it's vacuum there's no friction yeah so what happens is easier to move something when there's no friction mm-hmm. then there's friction right so yeah. lot of time when you have um, let's say um, yeah airplanes cars you know trains everything has to be the yeah friction that you get right not mm-hmm. only that so yeah. even if you have this levitative uh, trains where they don't actually you know get magnetic in contact power, with yeah. magnetic power they are like actually levitating over the rails right but still um, the air friction is the biggest strike even if you are developing this uh, super cars so once you hit to a certain uh, speed limit it's really difficult to break that speed limit just because the air pressure the friction given is so bad yeah. it's really diff- you need a lot of power to break that yeah. So That's if you why take, if you take a F1 car, yeah, um, the aerodynamics play a huge part. In correct, it. correct. I mean, like all automotive, even the fuel consumption, all that depends on these kind of things, right? Yeah. So if you take that um, the air friction out of the equation, mm. so basically you you can accelerate to those kind of speed with uh, less amount of energy. Yeah. Right? Otherwise, you need lot of energy to beat the. unnecessary things like mm-hmm. so i don't know how he's going to do the vacuum and all that but uh, they have done few tests right yeah uh, in small trucks and yes. now uh, they are moving into like uh, doing bigger ones and uh, i hear dubai wants to try it out first yeah so. so i don't know i mean like what i can't understand is still just imagine the g force you had to experience when something accelerate yeah. to 1000 kilometers yeah and then coming down to a stop mm-hmm. so that but i don't think uh, they will do 1000 at the seed uh, start i think it will be around 500 600 Correct. plane speeds so yeah. so that's not bad right so yeah. uh, uh well something if they want to try it out in sri lanka right <laughs> but it's easier to do it here as well i mean it's a small country can do a lot of things yeah just imagine having one of those from jaffna to colombo right yeah and then you know connecting most like you know candy to colombo mm-hmm. jaffna to colombo rather than highway just imagine how i mean like if it's going at least 500 km an hour <laughs> from jaffna to kalamb it will be like what 45 minutes to one hour <laughs> less than that right? less than that less fast <laughs> than flying right um 
uh, so the question I come come again is like these kind of innovations are coming up. I mean, I, like we were talking about like uh, last week, um, five years ago we used to do a podcast, so that's how it came about, right? Mm-hmm. Five years ago we used to do a po- I mean, like we stopped a podcast like almost three and a half, four years almost. Yeah. And then the tech, I mean, the challenges we had that four years ago in terms of, you know, getting this content to people who are listening into it. Um, so the internet connections we had, mm. the type of computers we had, all that, right? So within that four years time, tell a lot of things changed, right? Yeah. And uh, well, we didn't even have selfies back then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like yeah. we didn't have it, right? No. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have the word selfie, right? We didn't have the Instagram. Did we have Instagram? No? Uh, early stages, I guess. Yeah. Uh, not very popular. So that so just imagine what will happen in another five five years time, right? Yeah. From here, the, all those things can come to reality. Mm-hmm. The problem for us is our tech adaptation in terms of our country is far away, right? It just yeah. we but are not. Uh, if you take it, uh, the re uh, if you compare it with the region, I think it's pretty. I mean. Not that bad, but... Yeah, it's not bad, but like yeah. compared to Western <laughs> world, we are bad. <laughs> um, well, I mean, compared to other regions, what happens is still in... Uh, they, are, they are large, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's for them, it's tough to yeah. implement something. And companies also like to come because there's yeah. a huge market. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sri Lanka, even the mobile adaptation, the mobile technology comes quickly because it's a small country. They can experiment. It's easier, mm-hmm. geographically yeah. small. Yeah. That's why. So, we had to take a small break. Uh, see you after this. Welcome back. So before the break, we were talking about Elon Musk, yeah. Modcom. Yeah. So um, uh, one of the other companies he's doing is SpaceX. Yeah. So what they are doing is they are sending rockets yeah. to the space. So basically, NASA don't do it anymore. Yeah. So NASA hire other people to do it yeah. for them. Uh, so uh, this is kind of very significant because uh, SpaceX is going to send the largest rocket ever made. Yeah. So, uh, this is basically uh, t- uh, three Falcon 9 engines. So, uh, the rocket is, uh, the regular rocket they use is called Falcon 9. Yeah. And uh, now, uh, this new one is called Falcon Heavy. Yeah. So, uh, as a test, this is just a test flight. Correct. So, this is going to happen on February 6th. Yeah. And if they can't make it on the 6th because of the weather or whatever, then they're going to try again on 7th. Yeah. So this is how that thing works. So, so if they have any problems, this is not going to the space station as yet, right? Uh, no, no. This is just a test uh, flight. No. Yeah. Uh, since it's, it's the first one of this uh, model, so uh, for fun, uh, Elon is sending his old uh, Tesla Roadster yeah. to the space. So <laughs> uh, uh, this is kind of a demo thing for yeah. him and a marketing stunt. Correct. So, I mean, uh, how do this, I mean, like, uh, SpaceX is a totally a private funded uh, company and then NASA funding them, the yeah. government is funding yeah, the them. government and they are working with uh, Air Force also, so they have a lot of projects. Yeah, so they have, they did a lot of things, right? Um, they are the first to have a reusable rocket. Mm-hmm. So, what happens with, um, when, when you have the old way of doing things, right, you, you have, like, rockets going up, but what happens is that the, at that point, it's just basically just detached from the rocket and they just fall down to the earth right yeah and that's it and there's nothing you can use apart from the shuttle itself right yeah. um so the shuttle is basically attached to the rocket the shuttle mm-hmm. and the rockets goes up and the yeah. rockets actually get destroyed mm-hmm. and the shuttle is the one that comes back yeah um so and shuttle they use only when people uh, go yeah. into the space otherwise if you take a rocket or i mean if you send a satellite or so that's basically it after deployment it just uh, oh, yeah. Well, it just becomes space debris, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I mean, we don't only litter the planet, we actually litter the atmosphere as well. Yeah. We have a lot of, you know, dust, I mean, uh, broken down rockets, uh, then, the, well, they dump garbage as well. Yeah. Uh, that's there, and then you have satellites that doesn't work. Yeah. So, actually, um, around the Earth, there's like a, like, a, what do you call a ring of garbage? Yeah. And also, uh, when uh, this happens, uh, 
the thing is uh, the first stage uh, has the tanks yeah. and the engines so yeah. it's around 80% of the cost yeah of the rocket so yeah. if you can save this you can yeah. s save a lot of money so what they um, they did i mean it wasn't a uh, like a bit of process right they tried it they mm. failed and during the last i think 3 years they successfully landed it couple of times yeah so will this land till you know, another yeah uh, they are going to try it uh, and uh, see how it goes uh, uh, last week also this uh, bef uh, week before last week they also sent a rocket uh, that's a spy a satellite uh, but the thing is, uh, after it went to the orbit, the satellite went missing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what spy satellites. Uh, meant Maybe to they do. want to tell you. <laughs> yeah, it went down. It's like, oops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I hear it's nothing wrong with SpaceX, but the satellite malfunction. Yeah. Mm. And this happened yeah. like uh, uh, even the Hubble telescope, right? Remember when they put up the Hubble telescope out there and then they figure out uh, the mirror isn't working? Mm -hmm. It took them a fair amount of time to get it fixed, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, these things to happen, right? You have like millions of parts. I mean, it's not like you can go there and yeah. uh, uh, fast Fix on it. a nut or what. So. Yeah, so you had a plan for it as yeah. well. So, I mean, yeah, first of all, I mean, I mean, Mars mission had the same, right? Mars rover stopped responding. Yeah. Those kind of things happens all the time, right? Yeah. So, it's, uh, so, it's not like you can predict for it, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, just imagine the amount of engineering goes into these things yeah. only like one fails right mm -hmm. I mean that's 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 a great achievement right it's yeah. like at least you're figuring out you're fixing it and that's that's another step right so you you understand where the failure is so that's where our knowledge matters right that's mm -hmm. why these guys send so many rockets try to figure out what's wrong with it and because we are always going into unknown right yeah and uh, I think uh, everyone's next goal is Mars. Yeah. So and see how uh, we can uh, see if we can live in another planet. Yeah. And I always wonder why we are not going to the moon. Is it too close? This. <laughs> uh, especially because I think uh, gravity is also an issue. So uh, I think Mars has better. So yeah, compared to moon, Mars has better mm. living conditions, but. Yeah. It's too far, right? It's yeah, it is too far. I mean, uh, you can only uh, go every like two and a half hours because the alignment is perfect yeah. every two and a half hours. Yes. Uh, yeah. And it takes around like six months to go there. So, so it's not like you have your rocket, you know, like breaking down in the middle of the way and, you know, you send another one to rescue yeah. it, right? Yeah. So th those things you have to really plan for, right? And uh, again, when you send people there, then you have to have uh, other missions going, you know, supplying them with food. It's not like, well, I know uh, there's one movie where he went and, you know, plant potatoes and eat potatoes. Yeah. But <laughs> the significant of uh, SpaceX uh, landing the rocket is that you can land on Mars yeah. and come back. Yeah. Uh, uh, before that, we didn't have any way to like come back, you go there and you stay. Yeah, but only the way, one that actually worked was the, when they went to the moon, right? Mm -hmm. So they landed and then they came yeah, back. Yeah, because the gravity is not there. Yeah, gravity is not uh, that mm -hmm. hard. But when you go to Mars, the gravity plays a yeah. big role because you need a lot of energy to you know break away from the gravity. Yeah. And uh, talking about the moon, uh, this was done uh, like what? 63 or 69 <laughs> so <laughs> and the computing power back then was like uh, well yeah. i i don't even have anything to compare it to <laughs> so it, it it's that small yeah. right i mean we are talking about kilohertz speeds right in mm -hmm. terms of computer they run and sure. you know they uh, i actually the mass the moon mission uh, when they did it uh, the apollo uh, the the code software coding was done by a female mm -hmm. So this that's good one, right? I mean, yeah. back then, even then, uh, women, you know, write code and it and it worked, right? Yeah. So um, this is uh, this is good. I mean, like planning for these kind of things. So a lot of things we have right now, Tilinese, uh, are because of the space program, mm -hmm. right? We true, spoke true. about it as well. Um, so yeah. you know, out of this experiment, out of this, you know, uh, innovations, a lot of things comes to us. Yeah, very. Uh Popular one is the ballpoint pen. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a joke also. Uh, so uh, they had uh, ink pens and yeah. they can't use it on space because... There's no gravity. And there's no gravity. So what Americans did, they thought and thought and thought and finally 
on the ball point right yeah. other Rus- russians just used to pensy <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's all for time we have for today uh thank you for joining us um if you have any question comments uh, we can get in touch with us is dropping us an email at our tech talk at takaselke.com or go into our tv facebook page or the youtube channel just go to youtube and search for our tech talk you can find all the previous episodes there uh, so you can write a comment there as well uh, see you next week